This is Brian Castles for Lattice Semiconductor. In this video, I'm going to go over a reveal hardware debugger and the changes compared to ISP Lever. One of the main changes compared to ISP Lever is the fact that in the file list, as part of the project here, I now have a debug files folder. And this debug file folder allows me to manage and control the reveal project files for the reveal inserter. So as you can see here, for each file, I can choose whether to make it active or inactive. If it's inactive and I implement the design, even though it's listed here, I will not get hardware debug inserted into the design. So I must have an active file in order to take and do that. If I take an open reveal inserter without any of these being active, if there were no project files listed here, it would ask me to create a new one. Since there are ones, but none are, none are active, when I open it, it will ask me uh, that it found these and do I want to use one of those. If I take and double click on a specific one, it will take and open that one, so no matter which one it is. And then finally, if I set one of them as active, I can either double click to open it or I can just click the icon and it will automatically open the active one. When reveal is open here, I'll take and detach it so we can see more of it. And the inserter looks very similar to what you've seen with ISP Lever. You've got a data set area, I've got the design tree, trigger outputs, um, I can set up my traces, I can set up my trace options, and I can set up my triggers. The trigger units and the trigger expressions are the same as in the last release of ISP Lever, so there's no functional difference there. And of course, I can take in add cores, etc., as I did before, control my token manager, and of course, insert hardware debug into my design. So let's reattach here. And then I can make any of my changes, and then hit insert debug, and it'll ask me which ones. I can optionally import also, and then I'll take it run just like it does in ISP Lover. So then once I've finished inserting debug into my design, and I've taken and fully implemented the design process, um, just like I do with ISP Lever, I can then move on to programming the device and uh, using the reveal analyzer. In Diamond, you can still program the device using ISP VM, uh, but, but additionally, if you want to quickly reprogram your device from inside um, the Diamond framework, you can open the programmer tool, and from here, you can take and quickly uh, reprogram your device. And if you have uh, an existing scan chain, you can just go select the XCF file from ISPVM and then download. So once the device is programmed, you can now take and open the uh, reveal analyzer. And when you open the analyzer, you get this um, startup wizard. And from here, you can select uh, existing files or create a new one. In this case, I'll use the existing one that I have. And the reveal analyzer opens. Let's take and uh, detach this so we can um, see it a little easier. So the analyzer is very similar to what you had in ISP VAM in terms of the options. It's the same trigger expressions, the same, uh, same trigger units, the same trigger expressions, same trigger options. In this case, let's uh, center trigger it. And um, a slight change from ISP Lever is the ability to select which core to use uh, from the upper panel here. In this case, I've got just one core, so I'll take and use this one and I can take and run right from here. And once you're running, you'll see that it connects to the hardware, and then it'll start programming it up, and then wait for my trigger condition. So the running tells me it's waiting for my trigger condition. So let's go cause the device to trigger. And then once triggered, you can see the uh, data that takes and downloads, and then gets displayed. And then, of course, you've got zoom controls over here, so you can zoom in. Here you can see our trigger point. So these are all very similar to what you have in ISP Lever. A difference from ISP Lever is that um, you now have only one column 
showing cursor contents. In ISP Lever, you would have three columns, one for the uh, trigger data, one for uh, an X cursor, one for an O cursor. In Diamond, we now have uh, additional cursor capabilities. I can go in here, right click, and say Add Cursor, and then I can drop a cursor wherever I want. I can drag it along. If I drag it, I get rubber banding, uh, showing me time difference from where I'm dragging to, and then let it go. And then, of course, I can add more cursors. And the data displayed in this column is reflective of whatever is uh, my selected cursor. So I have other cursors there, and I can take in whichever one is the current cursor, I can move around and just click and move it. And then I can go to uh, another existing cursor and then just select that and get the date of the change. So different cursor behavior than what you had in ISP Lever in the Reveal Analyzer. In addition, if you right-click, you have some different modes. You have pan modes, you have select mode and zoom mode. So select mode, as you saw, was for selecting the cursors. I can also go into pan mode and move my uh, waveform around. And then I can also go into zoom mode and select different areas to take and zoom in on. So some small differences with Reveal Analyzer compared to ISP Lever. So that's a quick overview of the Reveal Hardware Debugger in Diamond. Functionality is very similar to what you have in uh, ISP Lever. There's just some additional file management controls from the file list and some minor differences to the analyzer waveform, uh, especially with the new cursor capabilities. For details on other aspects of the Diamond software, please see the other videos that are available.